Disclaimer, this video, like all videos featured on this channel, is definitely intended for mature audiences. This video is likely to contain profane language, content is inappropriate for minors. Video is not for kids. Welcome to the Dr. Green Dumb Show. Not an Yes, today I will need a lot of help. <laughs> Welcome to the Dr. Green Thumb Show. I'm Be Real, aka Dr. Green Thumb, live on Twitch, Discord, YouTube, and the home site www.bereal.tv. Welcome to it. I got some special guests today, legendary, if you will, celebrating a 30 year anniversary. Oh, man. I got the ladies from Escape right here. Candy, Tiny, and Tamika. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, man, it's good to have y'all in the building. And yep. uh, we, will, we will talk about some things shortly. Up in the treehouse, the treehouse crew, Bolton, Blombo, Bra Bra, and the Dominator. How you doing, B? I'm just bigging it. Being bool as usual. It's various business, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we got the legendary DJ C Minus up in here. What up, everyone? Welcome. Yes. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. And the concentrate king, Cali Blaith. Hey. Yeah. What Squeezing up, it off. <laughs> How you doing? Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, look, I, I, I've been a fan since day one when they walked y'all into the Sony building and uh, the fir from the first album. And I, and I was going to tell you a story uh -oh. off top, right? <laughs> We've so, been a fan, too. Yes. <laughs> And Mutual like fanship. We, we kind of stole some stuff from it. But. Uh, it it's, it's all love, and you got to know that off top. So I'm on my first date with my, you know, later to become wife, right? Okay. And, uh, you know, and I was always listening to, like, the hardcore hip-hop shit, and we are foregoing our rule today, all yeah, right? So don't be giving me no <laughs> on that. Um, so... In, in my library of CDs, you know, it's all hardcore hip hop shit and all that stuff. And on our first date, I had just gotten y'all shit. And she looked at, at that CD and she was like, oh, he likes Escape. He's got a soft side to him. <laughs> yeah, baby. Nice. Yeah, yeah she, she, it wasn't all like a brick wall right here when, when she found, that, um, when, found the album in the, in the car like that. It was awesome. Okay. And she reminded me that story. Like when she heard y'all was coming on, because you know we we have watched the shows and all that stuff. We're you know, so we help you get some. That too, yeah. He was out to your album. It, was, it went down to your album. Okay, we love it. Now that's good to know. Hell yeah. Uh, we was practicing then. We didn't make no babies yet, but the, you know it's the practice sessions. <laughs> and the rehearsal getting all sweaty and shit over here. <laughs> Hey, but I want to congratulate y'all because I mean, first off, the 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 verses y'all did with SWV was awesome. Thank you. Y'all shined on that shit, and seeing y'all like still functioning and doing the shows on the level that you guys are doing them that that shit is everything to me, and I congratulate you guys on that. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. It's crazy that you know it's been thirty years. Thirty years. This is our thirtieth anniversary year, right? Yeah. Now, right. Um, but to know that like we can still do concerts and still do all that and people still rocking with us is crazy. I mean to sell out arenas, we've never done that back in the nineties. We yeah. were never able we never did any headlining uh touring anyway. So this, to come back, you know, in two thousand seventeen, headline our own tour and sell out every arena, like that was a big deal for us. I mean that's mm -hmm. it it's must feel fucking awesome that like maybe they didn't get it in the beginning, like to where it blew up. But now it's like showing up, like all that work y'all put in showing up yeah. in a big way now. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, people did like, I mean, all our albums were platinum. So people yes, supported they were. us in that way. But 
I mean, sometimes I feel like we kind of dropped the ball too. Like we didn't tour enough. Right. So like yeah. on each album, we would only do one tour, right. and then yeah. that was it. Like we was. And then they'd want y'all back in the studio. Yeah, we go right back in the yeah. studio, not yeah. realizing. I mean, I guess when we were young, we were just doing whatever right. our manager told us. We didn't realize like the money was in doing the shows and yeah. staying right. on the road. So we, we missed out on a lot of bread. Mm -hmm. But we're you know making what, up for it now. You're making yes. it up. Yeah, you're making, making up, up for it, it now. now. Sold out shows, arena oh, shit. Yeah. But you know what it is? I think sometimes when when the the, the record companies know they got dope writers, mm -hmm. they try to get them back in there because hit after hit, it mm -hmm. could come. Right. And you know, because I remember them trying to pull us off tours and stuff like that. Like, hey, we need y'all back in the studio. Because they weren't doing 360 deals back then. Right. So they wasn't getting none of our tour money. Yeah, they weren't getting yeah, that. So they were like, nothing. get your butt in the studio. Yeah. And it's, man, it they pulled a lot of groups off the road for that too. And they, mm -hmm. they missed out on their money and merch mm -hmm. and, and those actual shows and connecting with the fans to like build a bigger base. Right. You know, but I think I think y'all doing TV, doing the reality shows connected y'all back with those fans and then also the new ones that like got to know you before they knew about the music and then connected to the music. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's called back catalog sales, baby. You know, yeah. learn about this. Yeah. Because I mean, the age group from our tour was like seven to 70. So yeah. like mm, big yes. wide age, right? Yeah, it was crazy seeing like, uh, you know, every generation sitting out yeah. there. Yeah. And, and it's crazy seeing like folks that like weren't even born yet. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> right. They got yeah. made to your music. Right. Oh, Singing it now. <laughs> yeah, baby. It, it, it's, it's, it's great that people are appreciating the music from that time. That we like we like to call it gold school. And and anybody that was doing the music in that time, I, I feel like they're a part of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. any right. any artist in that time that yes. we were in in those that part of the nineties. Yeah, I mean, yeah. everybody was coming out with something specific, but like distinctive and slapping. I agree. I mean, uh, yeah, you the, know, it's like now I don't know. Music is totally different. It's generic. Yeah, it's yeah. like yes, kind of generic. Is. Watered down. Everybody now is basically sampling everything we did in the nineties. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Like oh, all sure. the hits are samples, yeah. pretty yeah. much. You yeah. know. Yeah. So it's kind of crazy how everything is being brought back around. I was it was the telling. best music of yeah. the decade. I mean, what was better than the nineties? That's right. You're right it's about true. that. It's true. That's the you can't argue none of that. I mean, yeah, so, yeah some of the best shit came out then, uh, like from from hip hop to R and B yes. to dance hall to yeah. to even pop yeah. music. Mm -hmm. There was like slappers everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every genre was banging. I think technology sort of made it easy to make music, and that's when like a lot of people just sort of copied each other's vibes. Right. And that yeah. became like the norm. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, it's all about like being able to actually do the craft. Like y'all mm -hmm. do it. Y'all can get up there and sing and sound great. There ain't no effects on it. Right. right. <laughs> and a lot of these these youngsters can't do that. The they leaning crazy, on shit. Okay, so this is a crazy thing that I had to get used to. So when we started back doing shows together, um, oh. what was that, six years ago, um, I had never used in ears mm -hmm. before. Yeah. So like That's crazy. This, yeah, I had to like get used to that because I was used to us just busting out singing with our microphone, just even with it being echo in the room, we still knew how to be right. on key or whatever. But now it's like you know, now everybody uses in ears and the in ears make it hard to like, like you can hear yourself, but in you can't the, hear the crowd. You can't, you can't right. hear the crowd. Yeah, we had to get used to them. Everybody, like it took us a long time. We used to like take them out in the middle of the shows and maybe leave one. And mm -hmm. now we've got to the point. Okay, we really know how to work them. Girl, you got you used to take it. mine off. I mean, we still will take. Yeah, it be hanging. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's sometimes it's hard to hear yourself with those ba with the band in back, you know, yeah. and then yeah. stay on key, right? Right. Yeah. L let me ask you this: How hot was your costume on Mass Singer? Because <laughs> I saw that shit, girl. Oh hot God. as hell. And you killed it. Well, thank you. Um, that was the hardest thing I had to do. I remember um, because, like, you rehearse, right? With, um, because they do not want any of the dancers or anybody to know who you are. So even when you're rehearsing, you are, you have a hoodie on and you have just like this mask, yeah. but not like all your gear. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I have been rehearsing and I'm like, okay, yeah, 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 I'm ready for it. But the day that we had to do the dress rehearsal, 
because they you put know all of it on. Yeah, us. my character had the wings. Yeah, Ooh. and that harness. I couldn't breathe. I thought I was about to pass out. Oh. I was like, oh my God, what in the world? So I have a trick if you ever go on there. What was the I'm trick? So after that day, that was my learning lesson, the first performance. After that day, I, um, I bought a hockey mask, I bought a ski mask, and um, something else, I forgot what it was, but I would run in place with all that stuff on singing oh. because I wanted to recreate to get the used heat to, yeah, all right. that I had, you know, being in the suit because, you know, if you don't get used to that, you really will lose your wind and, yeah. you know, you're trying to sing. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Some of the costumes that, that they got to wear and perform that. Mm -hmm. yes. oh, man. Yeah. Some of them, they can't see. Yeah. So oh like, you know, the ones with the big heads, yeah. their eyes a lot of times are really where the mouth is. And they only got like a little slit wow. to look out of. That's they why some have fell off stage, right? Um, yeah, it's all, it's been all kind of, yeah, it's somebody crazy. did fall. Yeah, it's been all kind of crazy stuff that has happened. Yeah. But it's cool though. That's like really the most fun that I've had on like, you know, one of those type of shows because the cool thing is like, we don't even know who each other are. So like yeah. even the other people that are performing, they keep us all separate. But I remember like a couple performances in when um, the frog who ended up being Bow Wow, yeah. he was doing his rehearsal. Now, mind you, I told you we're still covered up. Yeah. But that was the first time I actually heard his voice rapping. You could tell it was him. I knew his right. voice. Yeah. We both were so, so deaf. We I knew. was like, I know who I, that I is. I knew who he was the minute I heard. So <laughs> it was funny to me, like, when I, at that point, you know, when we brought, whenever we all see each other, we all in full costume. So I would walk past him knowing he didn't know who I was. <laughs> 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 well, I would be like walking a, real close, like, yeah, I know who you are. I'm gonna be honest. I was like, I can't understand how nobody don't know this is Candy Boy. She has the most um, <laughs> distinctive, distinctive yeah. voice, yes. and I'm like, ain't no way they don't know mm -hmm. her voice. My Not wife, my, my wife knew it was you. She she, she, she was like, I, I think that's Candy. I'm like, that's not Candy. She's that's too busy. <laughs> <laughs> she got all funny. kinds of shit going on. She ain't got time for that. And sure enough. There it was. Voila. I was the first woman to win. Yes. yes. Shout out to oh, yeah. Women's History Month. Okay. okay. And, yeah. and you That's our girl. And you deserved it because you slayed everybody. Thank you. Yeah. And you know, I was scared as hell. I was like, um, you know, my family was like, you better not get cut on the first round. Mm. I was like, God, please don't let me get no cut pressure. in the beginning. Oh, oh. I, I don't know if I really saw myself winning it when I went out there I just was like just please let me get close to the end you know so I don't embarrass myself it's crazy that they, they're getting a lot of great singers there and then mm -hmm. some not so much mm -hmm. you know what I mean they're just trying to be there for the fun of it surprisingly I don't mean to cut you up but Shaka Khan was on the season I was she on. was yeah she was and she got eliminated <laughs> that oh, was wow. crazy to me that was, that was crazy that was crazy I mean when you think about the I'm sorry. Did they get eliminated because you you know who they who, who they are? No, mm -mm. no. Oh. It's, it's based on who, get who gets. It's they based like on it. who gets the most votes, like on the best performance, mm -hmm. oh, right? Okay. Yeah. So you gotta get votes from the audience and from the um, judges. The thing about it is, um, you know, it's a lot of great singers that come on there, but you gotta think each performance you got a different audience. Yeah. So just because you may have killed last week. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So people think, oh, well, they were killing it the whole time. If you had a bad night, then, yeah. you know. There, there was a couple of times they, they showed uh, some, a couple of artists that shouldn't have won, but it was their presentation. It was, it was more fun. Mm -hmm. Like the other artists may have sung better, mm -hmm. had a better song, better performance, but the so way that overall, yeah, overall mm -hmm. the crowd liked right. this better. Mm -hmm. they, they, some, so for some reason that gets through, like they can hear and they're not singing in pitch. So, somebody was like yelling the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like, it's like, well, I, okay, we know this isn't going through. Right, mm -hmm. and it went through. I was yeah. like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I could get on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could. I could go in there and sing, and they, you know, hey, I might make it through if, <laughs> yeah, if I get the right presentation. Popping. Yeah, I remember right. the first time I even saw or heard that. I was like, "What the hell is this stupid? Another stupid ass reality show!" But 
then when you watch it and you realize actually <laughs> yeah it's like you know what and and yeah. every it's not just you almost a, a lot of big performers are saying it was one of the most difficult things they had mm-hmm. to do so oh, wow. it shows that it's not just some bullshit mm-hmm. you gotta, it is not you got to not only be good but you got to be able to perform in a hot sweat mm-hmm. in that heavy mm-hmm. costume yeah. mm-hmm. and still sound good yeah. so yeah. then you get a little respect for the show because mm-hmm. you got to yeah. Perform even at a greater level than you normally do. And you're learning those songs yeah. like a couple days before you perform. You got to learn really? the song. Right. You got to learn the choreography. You got to learn <laughs> everything lot. within like a couple days before you actually perform it. Damn. And then when it gets closer to the end, it's harder because it's less and less days you have between. Because, you know, at first they got the round C group, right. round B, and so you get a little break. But at the end, once they narrow down, it's like you got performances every other day. And it ramps up, to, yeah. yeah. Wow. Did How- they pick the songs for you, or did you have a, the opportunity to choose the song you wanted to sing? I had a couple that, you know, I gave some that I wanted to try out, and then some they gave. And that's the other thing, is song choice. Right? Right. So I wanted, like at the end, I decided to do Lil Wayne's song because I wanted to throw it off and do something that people weren't expecting. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take a, take a rap song and sing it. You that, get what I'm saying? That okay. word. So I that was, was like... Yeah, was, what song was that? I don't know. Um, uh, what is it? Um, How to Love. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was dope, though. That was dope. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> I, be, I, I became a fan of this show, like I, I like you did. I was like, "What the fuck is this? Is this stupid?" Show? And then you know, I started hearing something. I'm like, "I know that voice." Yeah. And then I realized what what this what the show was. But it, it, you know, in the costumes, you got to appreciate the work what? everybody's putting in with yes. those costumes on. Mm-hmm. Even the ones who ain't really singing that well. Yeah. The costumes yeah. are amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm so mad we didn't get to keep them. Yeah. You didn't get to keep them, huh? No, they have like a, they're saving them all, I guess, for like a museum or something they're doing. Yeah. I know one person who got there. So. Oh, they, did they sneak it out? No, he said that he. I'm keeping it. He um, kind of, I don't know how he finagled it. He, made, he worked it out. He hijacked that shit. <laughs> so you guys are start. You guys got a new show cracking right now with um, SWV, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Queens of R&B. Yep. And that, and that got created based off of... Versus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the hype from the verses. Mm-hmm. That's dope. How, how was it, I mean, how was it for you? Because I know that they're experienced in like doing a lot of the TV stuff mm-hmm. and, and it was newer for you, right? Yes, this is like my second, my second um, show. Yeah. But it was still, it was a little rough for me because of the, the drama that played out with my family. Right. You know, so that was, that was really tough. And it's tough being, you know, having that vulnerable side show, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. for everybody to see. And I know y'all could relate to that because, I mean, your show was based off of y'all, your family. Right. Yeah. yeah. Her, her show is more fun loving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The whole yeah. family hustle. Yeah. Housewives, we, we cut throat. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. We know that you yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. I know yeah. the drama and I understand how it is. It's hard to... um when things happen between your family and you letting it play out in front of the world, that is tough. It is. Yeah. Um, and no offense, it's going to get tougher for her just because, yeah. you know, it's one thing when you dealing with it when we're filming, but when it airs and then the whole world is chiming in and the yeah. comments, it's like, that makes it tough, tough. Right. And we don't, you know, I'm so used to, like, being able to see my stuff and say, I don't like this, take this out. Woo, woo, woo. On Bravo, we have no control. It's, you just got to live with no it. no say. Wow. So, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, so we see it basically when y'all see it. And so we don't really know how they're going to, how it's going to look. We don't know what exactly. nobody said. So I think it's going to get worse before it gets better because mm-hmm. once Is we see, once, I don't know, but I know it's going to get worse. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just know that. Yeah. Because we're gonna be able to see what everybody said about each other, and, right. you know. It's just but we made gonna... a pact. Yeah, yeah, we made a pact. We made a pact. No matter you know what, what we say, even if you gotta call and cuss me out, or I gotta call yeah. and cuss you out, we get off that phone. It's done. Let each other yeah. know. Yeah, it's that's done. Right. And, and, and ro- let it brush off. <laughs> I mean, that's the best way to do it. I mean, because there, you know, when you're in a group, disputes happen. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, disagreements. Right. You know, like yeah. the love is there, but sometimes you know, it's, ideas might be in a different direction. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. But it's being able to get past that, and it's great that y'all, you know, have had some, some of those, just as we have. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. there ain't no group that's had success that hasn't had some of these dramas. Well, we mm-hmm. still got the drama. I yeah. mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we gotta just address the elephant in the room. Obviously, it's three of us here, but you know, we got four members. Right. <laughs> um, 
You know, but, you know, like what she said, a lot of the drama that happened was <coughs> between her and her sisters. Yeah. We have two sisters in our group. Right. right. And um, that can be tough in itself, doing Ooh. business, right. family. Mm. Yeah, it's, 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 it's tough. But, you know, the passion. The, yeah, it's, it's tough. But, you know, hey, listen, you, you had the strength to be in this business in the first place. This is one of the toughest businesses yes, to be is. in. Yes. You've survived 30 years. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be great. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to be great. It's going to get better. Thank you. you know, it, it's, it, it's like this, right? Since we came out as artists, right, we've always been under the microscope, scrutiny um, left and right, from the music to how we, you know, roll day to day. Mm-hmm. Now, in this, this era of the technology and all these platforms and the reality shows y'all on it's that to the max y'all are already used to it yeah. it's 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 now just getting used to a different version of it mm-hmm. right and that took some time for y'all to get used to i know and now we got another girl group that's you know just as powerful in in their own right and you know so there's all these egos going left and right and we have a lot of respect for each other we're trying to keep that respect yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what i'm saying um it's just you know it's a lot, but it's gonna be great for TV. Yeah, definitely. I, I heard I heard y'all um, on KTLA today. And oh, you did? It, yes. It, I, I watch KTLA, man. As, as stank as they are sometimes with us, <laughs> I love them. I, lo- I love them and hate them at the same time. But I love that mm-hmm. they had y'all on. And and one thing that that I was it was interesting to me that y'all said is, was about the first single that you guys didn't want it. Oh, you right, didn't right. see yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, you thought it should have been something else, and we went through that same same thing because, really? like, yeah, on Black Sunday, they wanted insane in the brain. We wanted like we ain't going out or when the shit goes down. We were trying to get darker, mm. yeah. And <laughs> but they knew they couldn't market that, right. so they were yeah. like, "Nah, we want this," and we're like, "Really, you want that?" And then it blew up for us. They were like, mm. "Oh." Okay, maybe yeah. we shouldn't be picking our songs. <laughs> you know, How did y'all feel right. about it when, when it happened for y'all? Well, we for one, we didn't want, we felt like just kicking and we was a real singing group. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we felt like this ain't showing no vocals. This ain't showing, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. what we do. And mm-hmm. so he was like, man, I'm telling you, this is mm-hmm. it. And so, you know, we really didn't have no choice. We kind of like, yes. all right, whatever. Mm-hmm. And he was right, you right. know. Yeah. Um, it was it. it, was it. Was it. The 90s yeah. was yeah. hip hop driven. Yeah. You know, even though R&B was, was like. Well, R&B was like really strong in the 90s. It was strong. Yes, so it was. Hip hop yeah. was yeah. like, yeah. if you add the hip hop with it, yeah. that's how SMV yeah, that's, had so many hits. Because yeah. they, yeah. they had the hip hop sound from yeah. New York. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What, that, that was the thing you started noticing is that like the newer R&B groups like yourselves started mixing up the hip hop sound yeah. with yes. the R&B and mm-hmm. that was like something nobody heard before and it just like snapped in perfectly. Yeah, that was what make it, made it so dope. I mean, when, as a DJ, I had just started playing like on radio in my hometown and your first single was one of the first pieces of vinyl I got promo wise. Oh really? And it still to this day is one of the best sounding presses. Oh like, wow! Like yeah. it really, like everything. When you put it on, you're like, "Ooh!" You hear everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. that, you know, it's you know, kudos to you. You know, because forever, like that is a record that I will always like. Oh, let's see how it compares to this twelve. You know what oh, I mean? Like, oh, like, thank you. Oh, so props. Many props, and I got to give you props for your business acumen. I mean, like you've been doing amazing. <laughs> um, aside, like you know, because a lot of artists. We get sidetracked in terms of, you know, being entrepreneurs. You know, our managers are, are, you know, people that rep us from our record companies. They want us to stay the path on making music because they get paid off of that. Mm -hmm. Right. But, you know, so they sort of distract from from that particular thing. But you didn't allow that. You, oh no! Mm-mm. You you uh you you took it to different levels. <laughs> the sex toys, hey, crazy. Hey, yes. that's the funny thing. A lot of people, um, when I first started out doing the uh, adult toys, a lot of people were kind of like, "Are you sure that's what you want to do?" Because you know, they was like, "That's not an acceptable, right. you know." The, brain. the microscope came down. Yeah, on, and, and I had, everybody. See, has I got sex. to the point where. <laughs> I think what it was, okay, so when I was younger, I used to read a lot of financial books because obviously we came out as teenagers and I was trying to figure out, like, how do I not be the stereotypical the statistic uh, too. kid artist right. that blows up and then you grow up and you're broke. So that was like my thing. I never wanted to be broke. 
Um, but the main thing it tells you is to always have multiple sources of income to become a millionaire right. and to stay a millionaire. So with that being said, um, you know, at first, you know, you're all most people in the industry, clearly not you, because you're doing <laughs> what you want to do. <laughs> but a lot of times back in the day, people wanted to put on a certain image or whatever so they could be accepted by brands, right? Right. right. But then I started, I mean, as a black woman, it's only so many brands that had like a few black women they would use all the time. They only use like three black women for different things, like say for instance, 15 years ago, right? Yeah. It wasn't like everybody getting out the same opportunity. So I just thought about it one day and I was like, you know what? I don't give a fuck. If, oh, excuse me. Yeah, Dave, you're, you're totally good. cool. I was just like, you been good. I don't really give a fuck if I'm acceptable <laughs> to brands. I'm gonna make my own brand and then the people that rock with me, they're gonna rock with me and I'm gonna build my brand up. And so that's why, like when everybody was like, are you sure this is what you wanna do? Yeah. I'm like, I'm online. I was doing candy coated nights online, right. talking about sex and relationships. I had a huge following for that. So I was like, I got a following in this lane. I'm a woman. Women have sex. I don't care what True you that. say. Right. True that. Yes, we do. That's so where babies come from. I don't see why not. Like, let's rock with it because. At the time, I guess the only people who had sex toys were like porn stars. Right. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Or would admit <laughs> to having them. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Is, yeah. No, I mean, well, no, no, no. A face, product line. Oh, I That got you. were the they, face I of the got adult you. toys, yes. right? right? So I was just like, yeah, well, bedroom candy. Come on, let's go. What's the craziest? <laughs> what's, what's, what's the craziest toy that you have that like even makes you go like, I don't know. Ooh. Bestseller type of thing. We have one that looks like a sword. <laughs> I always say that. Stabbed because, for real. <laughs> but what it is is the middle part, well, it has a handle, yeah. right? And the middle part is for penetration. Right. Can I say yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then the front is the front piece that sticks out just a little bit is to tickle your clit, and then the little piece at the back is to tickle the back door. Right. Basically. Yeah. So you got the <laughs> multi <laughs> multifunctional. Multifunctional. Yeah. But it looks funny because <laughs> it looks like a, like a little, like a sword that has two tips, you know? Right. You know, like the middle long part and then the two tips in the, on the front and the back, on the front and then. So, yeah, that one is cool. Um, but now we have so many products, like we have for... We got something for everybody. I know the guys there. right now are taking notes to, you know, buy their wifeys. The, oh, the we team. have one called the Helping Hand for the guys. The Helping it's, Hand. It's That's called Helping Hand. Oh, my hand. God. That's but it's, it's when I tell you it's amazing. All right. Every, you know, it loves it because it actually, um, it's a sleeve or whatever, but it has a hold on both ends. So basically, even if you, you can use it by yourself or... You know, you can use it, and maybe your wife can catch the other end for you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Teamwork. I try to keep it as safe as possible. Makes the yeah. dream work, yeah. yeah Teamwork, teamwork. indeed. <laughs> but it's amazing. Right. We got a lot of great products. Yes, I'm just yes they do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she says, yes, they do. I'm going to take your word for it. I just did this video with um, our sex wing. I just made, like, this reel, and I just did, like, a little dance routine on it. On the door. It was so funny. Like, it, it kind of went viral a little bit. Of course it, of course it, it did. Like, it was, yes, it went viral. And, um, but, you know, sometimes you just have to be like, hey, you know, this is how it could be used. Ah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, you must enlighten people sometimes, you know. Yeah, what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, Shed you know. light. <laughs> yeah, and that viral video will touch a lot of people. That'll touch some lights, people too. buying it, so yeah, you know. it works. <laughs> Why not? Oh, yeah. oh man. The Treehouse is actually checking out bedroomcandy.com right now. All right. Go through the shop. Go to the shop. Right. Go to the shop. Right. Then, you know, I'll send you something. Bolton okay. is cut. Bolton is We got the best lubes ever. Okay. Lube. You know, you know, huh? Aton got that sword on order already. Uh, yeah. Himself. Oh, my. Or that, what, what was the, what was the <laughs> helping hand? Yeah, the helping hand. <laughs> going for that helping yeah. hand right now. We got now. the helping hand. And helping. then we got the helping hand with the vibe to it. It'll vibrate. You've got two different ones. I get shakes. Yeah, it'll, it'll vibrate was, you know, helping the hand. <laughs> you mm. know. <laughs> all right. It does a lot. That is a helping so, hand, all right. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Right now, oh, the new product is our peach. It's called Peach Buzz. 
but it's for everybody that's a fan of Real Housewives. Right. And you want their peach. It's a vibrating peach. But, you know, you can have fun with it. But I always say it's multi-use. It's multi-use. There you go. Right on. Yeah. I, you know, I know a lot of people are waiting for this next season, too. <laughs> Yeah. Most especially my wifey. Oh, <laughs> it's, like, it's going to be good. It's yeah. going to be lit. Don't pretend you ain't excited, too. You know you get off. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I watch. There, bro, so. I, I watch. Oh. I, I'm, I'm up on game. Let me just tell you, you know. <laughs> I've been pulling that my girl watches for a long time. Your girl watches. You watch. You get uh, we, Okay, it. listen. We watch. There you go. <laughs> we watch. That's right. We support yep. all day. I appreciate it. The storylines are just, you know, outrageous <laughs> in a great <laughs> way. Yeah. Every yeah. Watching the yeah. 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 Oh, we we watched yours too. We watched it all. Shoot. Oh yeah. Thank you. Trust. <laughs> we we were up on game. Mona asked me to get in into the um the the, the what was that shit called? Love and hip hop. Love and hip hop L.A. But I was like, mm, cannot oh, oh, stuff like man. Wow. That would have been. I said I got my own reality. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> that ain't it right now. Wow. <laughs> Ask me in five. That would be interesting. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think about it from time to time. It's, it's like, but what would I allow, right? Mm -hmm. Can I be that vulnerable? <laughs> At what cost? But, but my why wife can't did. he just do his own show with him and his lady? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that's true. Too. Yeah, yeah. Have more control. I, I think it would be great if you could just do your own show. Like, yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Instead of an ensemble, because so, yeah. with an ensemble, it can get really messy. And the thing yeah. about it is a lot of people don't understand it is hard to carry a show by yourself. Yeah, it is. So, it so, is. I mean, I mean, you got a you lot of kids. A, I got a lot of family, so and I don't a lot know of family. if you have like, a lot of family. But some people have, you know, even if they don't have kids, they have like uncles and people mm -hmm. that are like really interesting that you want to see yeah. that's funny that like, you know, you just waiting right. to turn on for it to come on because this nigga's funny. Yeah. yeah. The even personalities. If, right. The even personality. if it's your show, you got to still have your own ensemble. Like, it's whether it's the person. people that's working with you, you know, your family members. Yeah. Everybody got to be willing to participate. And some people don't have that. They don't have, like, a lot of people around them that are willing to participate. So I see, like, sometimes fans be like, well, why didn't such and such get there on the show? That person may be funny, but the people that they live with may not be. Yeah. May not be. Yeah. Or the yeah, people yeah. that they work with may <laughs> not want to be in yeah. it, you know, and so they it's hard. Yeah. A, a, yeah. a personality might have heat, but like they also got to have other personalities around them yeah. for it to, to drive it. Right. Because right. they can't just live off, live off of one personality. Right. right. Yeah. And that is hard, like to try to like do what you do and then spin off to do one on your own. Yeah. Without having those, you know, loud characters mm -hmm. or, you know, vibrant or, you know, bright, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I've done a lot of specials and people be like, why does Bravo always give her her specials? But it's like, people don't understand. It's like the old lady gang, my mom and my aunts, they are a show by themselves. They, they characters. Yes. Then, like, all the people that work with me, Don Juan is over the top. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, it's a lot of people that are around me on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Oh, then I got a good show then, cause yeah. I got a lot of characters around me. What do you mean? Exactly. <laughs> I say, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you? Yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> you guys are you guys are doing a hell of a pr promotional run right now. You guys have been everywhere. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's just the beginning. It's, it's just the beginning. And it's just starting. And it's does, just does it feel starting. Like, Y'all are tripping. Does it feel like 93 <laughs> again? No. Does it feel like 93 again? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, mm. it's different. <laughs> it's, it's like we know what to expect now. Yeah. 93, we didn't know what to expect. Yeah. It's all, it was an all new experience. You know, my yeah. husband just told me. He said, you know, I've been looking at, you know, I did all this promotion for this last movie. You know, did I? But he was like, you know, some people don't even do no promotion for their, their stuff. And it just goes, it just does great. You like know? who? I don't know. He was talking about people like on Netflix. So somebody he named and he was just like, it wasn't no real promotion. I was like, but baby, Please was on tell me who that person is. Yeah. It was, I was like, it was on Netflix. I mean, uh, he just named it. He said. Uh, was it a comedian? Well, let me think about it. Damn, mm. he just told me Because I personally feel like marketing is everything. It is. It, it is you yeah. can have, like, the most amazing album, the most amazing movie or TV show. If nobody's promoting it, nobody knows about it. I think there, what right? he's yep. saying is commercials and billboards to him are better than right. just, like, running around here and here and here and here and here. Like, you can do, like, you know, TV and commercials right. and big mm. billboards. He was like, people really see that. They notice it. Like, you know what I'm saying? He was like, just going around from place to place to place. Like, it's just a lot. <laughs> a person I would say that really does a lot of promo is um, 
What's his name? Kevin Hart. Oh, he, he does. Oh, yeah. He does lots of yeah. promo for his he stuff. Does. He's everywhere. Yes. Mm-hmm. He be everywhere promoting. Well, you know what it is? Is is the 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 promo is you know the the label or whoever it is trying to get you to do it and all that mm-hmm. stuff. But it's also the investment in yourself and like right. pushing whatever product or event or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So it's in, in in the best interest. It's just that like the old school way they used to do it doesn't work anymore. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. like the the new ways that they have now are, are more efficient. Mm-hmm. But it's it's shit you still got to get used to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also a lot of the actors they ha- they get paid for that promote in their contract that's yep. part of their contract yeah, yeah. well okay. some of them they have definitely have they, started doing that um yeah, they definitely doing but that. i just feel like overall like for me i don't want to be attached to wackness right yeah right. so like i want everything that i'm a part of to pop off to be dope or whatever so i'm gonna do extra stuff to make sure well we doing it baby so yeah, oh, yeah. Doing, that's doing right a good job <laughs> yeah stay at it doing a great job y'all <laughs> i mean to, to come to to come to this level still to like be on the level. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's hard for anybody. I mean, in this game, but I think y'all have utilized television though too in a way that like helped helped keep the name and keep the vibe out there. Mm-hmm. And y'all, you know, given the anticipation, like people were waiting for y'all to get back together. Y'all fans were waiting, and so when you finally gave it to them, I mean, you seen the reaction. Mm-hmm. And even more so after after that verse is again, you know, because then it's a generation of people that just getting put on to y'all. They're like, oh, this is oh, this is where they got that sample from, mm-hmm. or you know, sure. just mm-hmm. being yeah. educated on on y'all music, and it gives that 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 second wave of boost. You know what I mean? But it's it's I think when you utilize TV properly, you know, everything that you do, if it's quality, they're gonna fuck with it. Mm. You know, and that's I think that's that's promo that it's beyond anything right there. That's right. Like yeah. when you're doing a TV show and you're like in people's faces from week to week, um, they're just waiting to see what y'all are gonna do next. Mm-hmm. And it's it's awesome when you could back it up with with okay. quality shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which y'all do. Thank you. Thank you. That is no doubt. Thank how, you, thank how did it feel going from like you know doing like um the reality show to you know doing the the, the series. I'm saying, wait, to, uh, doing Housewives? Yeah, from doing Housewives to doing, the, what, what was it? Um, uh, the Queens of R&B. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Which one? Um, Mad Singer? No, no, no. It was, uh, is it? It's staying in the house with the, what is it? No, nah, you're acting. Oh, acting. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I said a million like... things before. <laughs> oh. um, well, acting is, is, is night and day being on a scripted show versus right. the reality show. But it was a dream come true because, like, I always wanted to act. Like, mm-hmm. when I was younger, I really wanted to act more than I wanted to sing. We went to performing arts school, mm-hmm. and I did drama in school, and I was in the Youth Ensemble of Atlanta and stuff. Um, but our music jumped off first. Yeah. And I just didn't pursue it like that when we were younger. So when we got a few years back, I was like, I'm going for it. I'm going to start doing a lot of auditions and just go after it. And now I'm on The Shy. Yeah. And I'm also on another show called A La Carte. And I remember I was so scared the first day I went to go to set for the shot. For the shot, yeah. Because they are, you know, respected actors. And sometimes respected actors who that's what they do, they kind of lightweight look down upon reality stars who act. Like you side, yeah. like you, like you would sidestep to get there, or right? Like that. But you know, people don't know your background. They don't yeah. know that you know I was acting in when I was younger in school, and I was in performing arts school. That I was in using some some of Atlanta. They don't know that, so they just look at it as, oh, she's just on a reality show, and she got a part on the show. And um, but it, you know, it takes a minute to you know earn their respect. Even though everybody on the shy were really really nice, and everybody was like treated everybody like family. Yeah. But I did. One of my friends, she did tell me later. She was like, "Yeah, we was kind of looking at you like, oh, here she comes." <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> that's crazy. But it's. I mean, we're good now. You know. I mean, everybody was like cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you put the work in too. I think they mm-hmm. respected that that you actually showed up put the work in and yep. we're actually good you know what i mean and they because they probably expected okay when's she gonna get killed off oh no <laughs> right? no yep no i'm still the, there nope, she's still alive it's like oh, three four so three seasons later four seasons later something like that but anyway that's right um 
you know, but it, it's really cool. You know, the thing is, it's it's more, I don't know, it's more professional when yeah. you do a scripted. It's like, okay, you have time cards. You know, reality is not union. Yeah. But scripted it is. Yes. So, oh. yeah, so you get there. You they don't food. overwork you. Yeah, they're not over. You're going to have all your food. Craft services. Craft services, food break. On point. Exactly. You got your trailer when you're in between scenes. Mm -hmm. Um, even though it seems like the days may be longer, but it's not. They're you know, easier days. Easier days, yeah. How about y'all? Do y'all feel like y'all want to get into films or, or TV, like scripted stuff? Uh, we definitely both do some acting. I mean, I did like a couple of little small things in Meet the Blacks. That's I had right. a part in Meet the Blacks. I did the Entourage, and I also played in, uh, what's the, the thing that Tracy Edmonds did for BET? Oh. With Lauren, Lauren London. I'm trying to remember the name. I, I know what you. I know, I know what you're talking about, though. <laughs> but I, I also was on that show as well. But I would love to do more. I want to do um, something like a. I mean, I, I want to kind of do something more so like with my family, um, kind of like Real Husbands of Hollywood. You know how yeah. they? Oh yeah. They take like real things about their life and they kind of make fun of it. And yeah. yeah. Play it the way yeah. you see it. Yeah. Mm. Maybe not how it really happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, people always think they know what the hell yeah. is happening. So <laughs> I, I would love to do something like that with my family. That'd be dope. Bring it. You could produce that. That would be dope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should. You should. Yes. Yeah. Well, we have it meet. Yeah. Y'all got the money. Go on, do it. No, right? <laughs> 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 this man. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys working on uh, any new music as well? We um, haven't been. Yeah, we haven't been. We've been asked that question a lot <laughs> in the last two days, but we haven't really thought about like getting in the studio. It's not like a known, but we haven't always said, especially Candy. And she <laughs> didn't want to mess up the legacy oh. that we had kind of left. You know, and a lot of people today really don't support music like they used to back in the day. Yeah, so absolutely. we don't want to drop something. Everybody's always asking, drop some music, drop some music. But are you really going to buy it? Are you really going to support, support it? it? Are you going to yeah. stream it? Like, yeah. right. you know, we don't want to just drop some just to say, oh, yeah, we dropped some and it does nothing. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, no noise. It is right. tough like, in 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 today's game. Like people are looking more at like, okay, well, I'm gonna get the streams. So mm -hmm. to me, I feel like my my mentality on it is now that I, I'd rather not put out albums. I'd rather just put out songs. And that's yeah. what people are doing now. Yeah. Now the game is totally different than it was when we were younger. And what I was saying to them is like, I see so many artists from the '90s or whatever who had hit hit hits. And then they drop a project now, and it's like... And it's, uh, the, it's yeah. all right. Because the people really want to come to your shows to see you sing right. the songs that they know. Mm -hmm. right. And right now, just this generation is about singles. They're not putting out full albums. Mm -hmm. no. right. A lot of people just drop singles. I don't know if a lot of people didn't notice, like, her. She dropped so many singles and had so many hits before she ever put out an album. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and that's what it's really about to me if you want to check the temperature. That's right. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, I definitely say, I'm sorry. No worries. I definitely say, yeah, single life is pretty good. Like if y'all wanted to do a little single, you know what I'm saying? Boom, bang. That probably yeah. wouldn't be like the worst. But you, you know, for, still, me, for me, my thought on is, is that you let the song breathe you know what I mean? Like with the album, it's like you got to hope that they're taking the whole piece unless you do like a Taylor Swift thing and say, well, you can't buy this album unless you buy the whole thing. Mm -hmm. right? right. But most artists, they don't have that. Mm -hmm. They You got to, you know, you could pick and choose the songs you like. So then you, you spend whatever time you spend making the album mm -hmm. for people to say, well, I like these four or five songs. I don't necessarily like these ones over here. So I'm going to yeah. get right. half of it. Right. And you spent all that time trying to be creative to present a piece right it's cohesive right so for me I, i'm like well the game has changed the temperature is different better to just put a song out and let it breathe mm -hmm. check the temperature on that and then yeah. follow up with another one let let that one simmer for a while and if it hits great if it right. doesn't you know it's all good it's if it doesn't put out another one another one <laughs> <you know. laughs> because another right one. now it's, it's i mean that's why i said i just feel like things are different like you just gotta keep hitting them over the head with something new until they catch on yeah. like a lot of the people they was dropping multiple singles before they really start getting the following well, yeah like the old boy takashi i mean i know people look at him as a joke but the the part of him that was actually genius was he only put out one song at a time 
and yes. it let people, you know, it it created a hype for him. That, he has a real following. Yeah, he yeah. has a real following because mm-hmm. he let everything breathe. Yeah, and the crazy thing was that he had all those singles leading up to the album, mm-hmm. and then the album was gonna drop that week, and that's when he got, you know, he yeah. got caught up. <laughs> that's when it all fell yeah, apart. Got yeah, but he had, but he had like the template. Ooh, like, and I'm surprised that not, you know, not more artists follow this template. Like, let's just put out songs, you know, an album's worth even, but just let them mm-hmm. breathe in their time mm-hmm. as opposed to like pressuring the, the, your fans and like which the, you got to take this whole shit <laughs> 25 shit right now take this 25 songs and love it. <laughs> that's the other thing like I, I don't understand how artists be putting like over you know like even 12 songs Yo, I mean we get paid for 10 of that is Chris Brown yeah. he will put out an album with 30 songs that's on game. you know why because he's because he's making his money on touring and merch yeah, you don't yeah. give a fuck yes, about that true. publishing you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. but as but a you writer should. you should <laughs> I'm like uh, I wouldn't want to get caught up in all of that me neither yeah. Me neither. Fuck that. Thirty songs. I was thirty songs. Last time I when they t- like when I got educated to that man, I was like, you know what? Psh, nah. We, like a lot of our songs on the first two albums, you know, they counted interludes as songs. So you could have maybe put twelve songs up there. Remember, they would only allow you to put eleven songs out yeah. at the most. Remember, it was some way they calculated the royalties. Right. They did more than that. They weren't getting paid mm-hmm. on more than. That. Yeah. If you yeah. if you put more songs on. They they diminished your publishing and right. writers and all that stuff. And <laughs> mm-hmm. look, look, this is how they did hip hop, right? Mm-hmm. Hip hop artists and producers, they counted the interludes as songs. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like if you had like ten songs, but you had like four interludes, you're over. Mm-hmm. You're over the amount. Mm-hmm. So they diminished the publishing and royalties for that. That's what <laughs> it's like. Fucked wow. up because they don't educate you to that. Your lawyer has to tell you that. Right, it's crazy. And if you ain't got a good lawyer <laughs> right. that got your back, you ain't knowing that mm-hmm. shit for a long time. Right. So, wow. uh, up and coming artists, you get paid for ten songs. Mm. You could give them twelve as a bonus. You giving yeah. them twenty, you ain't getting nothing. Nothing. Mm-hmm. nothing. Yeah. But that's the genius <laughs> in streaming now. True that. You don't have to get anything. Yeah, the people just get paid song by song, basically. Yeah, yeah. and you could get paid at shows. I mean, the bags some of these young bucks are collecting mm-hmm. yeah. for, like, just a, a song that got streamed. What? Like, Appearance at a club. Forget that, the show. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. And we can show up now just to do a, a club appearance and don't even sing anything and get a whole bag. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. That, that is the good thing, though. You know what I mean? You ain't got to no, work no, as hard. This for- is even better. You can just make a post on social media for yeah, somebody, somebody leaving. and not leave your house mm-hmm. and make a bag. Yeah, that's true. You know, they've made it easier to make a bag if you got hustle within you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. people that sit on their hands, you ain't going to yeah. get that bag. You got to go oh, get it. Oh, yeah, no. Nah. To, I know that bothers you when you see that in people, when right? When people are wasting it. Yeah. What? Yes. Oh, it boils my blood. Really. It hurts. Don't it? I be like, you can have all this. Okay, cool, whatever. Do what you do. Yeah, it's 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 like that scene in a uh, fucking Goodfellas where homie says it's a waste of talent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you yeah. see someone no, that's like Bronx the, Tale. The, oh yeah, Bronx. The saddest Tale, thing in life is waste of talent. Saddest thing in life, mm. waste of talent. And in this industry, we've seen it many a time. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. Someone gets in and then sits on their hands because they, you know, they're comfortable with that level of success they got they don't want to push it that comfortable is what makes you up yes Yes, it does i always be uh and my cousin told me this when i was younger and that shit stuck with me what i noticed about a lot of people who came out in the 90s they still be living in their success of the 90s that's right Mm. like they still think they hot (laughs) and my cousin told me one time Mm. she was like Used to bees don't make no money, don't make no honey, so don't nobody care what you used to be. That's right. And I was like, that is a word, okay? (laughs) So I cannot stand when somebody come around me, oh yeah, remember we used to be, oh we used to be, blah, blah, blah. What the? Used to be. What you doing now, though? That's what I want to know. That's real shit right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing right now? That's what kept Cypress, you know, relevant, is you never stop putting out music, never stop working, never mm-hmm. stop touring. We don't want to be broke. Yeah. <laughs> right. Gotta keep but, that's, but that's not used to. That's 
keep doing. Yes, you know yes, yes, definitely. No, I mean, it, you got to have that push. Yeah, yeah, you got to. You just that can't. Hustle. Yeah. You can yeah. never yeah. get comfortable in your current success. Yes. No. I always tell people, people are like, oh, you doing something? I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm already trying to figure out what's my next move. Yeah. Because I have to think of my next move while I'm in my current move. Because yeah. people be so on to the next. Yeah. Like, you would have worked so hard on something, and you put it out, it buzzes for a week, two, month. Yeah. Or like this show. We put right. all this energy in this show. It's six episodes. After the sixth episode, people yeah, are like, okay, what you doing next? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, you got to already have something in line to just hit yeah. them over the head. Bow, bow, mm -hmm. bow. And, that, and that's yeah. crazy because, it, you know, the hip-hop fan base, the generation in the 90s were very much, you know, different than that. You know, they like held on to groups and stuff like that, you know, like Build fan base shit. Yeah. These mm -hmm. days, yes, they will forget about you in a mm -hmm. heartbeat. Especially yeah. with... With the fact that there's there's a where you could say back back in the day maybe a hundred or a couple hundred artists would drop on a Tuesday mm -hmm. now it's a few thousand right and you gotta you know find yeah. the right shit unless someone is putting the stamp on it because everybody has access to put out their own thing which is kind of a good thing yeah. in comparison to back in the day now people can be their own label yeah. like they can you know promote themselves they can do everything so it's definitely. Um, People have way more access to release music, and it's not just a label deciding who could get come out right now. Now that's yeah. cool. That's one of the coolest parts. You can actually dictate every move, mm -hmm. yeah. however you see fit. You know, and that's, that's fun. That's that indie life. You know what I'm saying? With, with the big, with the major labels, it's not so free like that. Right. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll give you enough freedom to do what you what you want to do. I think. If if they believe Sometimes. in your vision, if they believe in your vision, right, yeah. Yeah. right, and they 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 feel like you guys are navigating your road and you know what you're doing, they'll they'll be like, okay, let's not do nothing till they fuck it up, yeah. you know. But if you have no clue, yeah, they'll drive you in the direction they want you to go. Mm -hmm. Look, yeah, I know yeah. you guys got limited time, so um, Co Bolton, do we got any questions uh from fans out there? Yeah, we got plenty of questions and comments. All right, run them fast. Um, first one up of the day, we got Cameron up in here saying, much love to the beautiful queens of Escape. Thank for coming you. To Be Real TV. Thank you. Thank you. He's saying, y'all are amazing and inspiring. Didn't know Tiny smoked. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's right. She's one of us. Yes. <laughs> yes. She's a smoker. <laughs> And we got LB Boogie Baby up in here saying, question for Escape. I heard that they didn't like their outfits in the Just Kicking It video. Is that true? And just kicking it? Oh, no. I don't remember. No, I had a problem, problem with saying that. we didn't like him. No, mm -hmm. no, that's that's the way we used to dress. That was yeah. our culture yeah. back then. On that hip-hop baggy yeah. shit yeah. back yes, then. We, we all, all oh, wore yeah. clothes like three times our size. <laughs> yes. it got it got to a point to where as we grew up we wanted to be a little bit more sexy. Yeah. yeah, so that's, that's when like, okay. Got, it's time to drop the pants and put on the little tight dresses. That's when y'all got fitted. <laughs> right, it was so right. good video. Everybody yes. was like, "Wait a minute, is that escape?" Wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> that was different. It was fun making that video, boy. Yes, we did. Playing in that water. <laughs> Some videos could be fun. And that yeah. one was. And we got Jay Rook up in here saying Escape had that baby making music for sure. Yeah, baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no lie. The girls get mad when I say this, but I'm like, you know what? I've made love off a few of our songs, so that put the stamp on it. Okay. Okay, oh, if I yeah. can get okay. me in the mood and keep me in the mood. But every now and then I hear tiny voice or candy voice. I'm like, what? Uh, 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 yeah, thank you. That's not supposed to be here. But the music Hilarious. itself, you know, I'm like, yeah, I can't uh, do this. I hear that. It's a little bit harder to do with our music. Oh. <laughs> Y'all's is easy. It's easier. And we got We Dest up in here asking, do all of you smoke? And if so, do you guys ever dab? No. Child, no. Nobody smokes. I'm the only smoker in the in the group. What what does dab mean? It's it's uh it's oh. um the concentrated form of, of cannabis. So like it's like a oil or sometimes a oh. Oh. Um yeah, know. I've tried it. I've tried it a couple of times. I mean, I'm not opposed to don't it. You put I don't, the oil on you or something? No, no, no. you ingest it. <laughs> That'd yeah. be great. You ingest um, it. Um but it's you know, um so it's awesome. it, I, I usually take in a lot of smoke, so I don't I you know, if I gotta sing, I'm definitely not gonna do it anytime soon because <laughs> I might choke. To yeah, them. it's yeah. The, the, like with the with the with the concentrates, it's like um, it's an edible. 
So you could have it like with whatever they made, like if it's a something mm-hmm. sweet or savory, okay. or they make also gel caps with just the oil, and you could pop those in. Mm. It relaxes you. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. oh man. Yeah, I, I did. I did too much the other day. <laughs> oh. Was too much. Was it had me on the floor hugging the concrete. Oh, oh so she not talking about the stuff that go in the little blower thing. You put it on the little heat. Yeah, yeah. yeah you could. You could do it that way too. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that that particular one, you could either ingest it or you could uh, put it on the hot nail and smoke okay. it. Okay. Hmm. But I don't really do edibles that much because edibles make your mouth dry, and I just don't. It make you really, really high. <laughs> it do. And I just yeah. like to smoke the yeah. you know the like control and smoke. Yeah. part of it. I'm with yeah. you on that. I mean, I, I I sort of do it all here and there, but like yeah. mostly I smoke the joints. Yeah, you yeah. do your edibles at night. Not when you're interacting. Yeah, like that's the room you hugging yeah. the floor. It was at nighttime. Okay, oh, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I took um, this, this what we call uh, full spectrum oil, right? Okay. And it's like all THC. And I took like 500 milligrams, and I took it. Um, I'm gonna say probably like 6:30 p.m. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't really feeling it in the beginning, so I thought, oh man, this shit ain't nothing. And mm-hmm. about an hour after I said that, I started feeling a little bit, a little bit more. And then the wave came on around 11.30. I was fighting it. I should have just went to sleep, but I was fighting against it. I was like, hell no, you're not going to knock me out. And who was? Who was? Within minutes, the, the, the full yeah. spectrum had me on the How ground. How to W. Like, I, got, I got all hot, right? I'm peeling off my hoodie. I don't know why I was wearing a hoodie in my crib, but I was wearing one. I peeled it off. I wasn't cool enough. My hardwood floor felt real cool. <laughs> and so I just, oh I laid down on the floor and about 30 minutes later, I guess, my wife was like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> and um, my dog was looking at me sideways like, you know. <laughs> and it, it, I had a hard night. This was like a few weeks ago, but that's full spectrum. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Word up. Anything else, Bolton? Yeah, we got LB Boogie Baby up in here asking, can you tell us any spoilers for the upcoming The Queens of R&B show? Mm. Spoilers. Spoilers. Um, we ain't supposed to, but... Uh-oh, there she go. <laughs> but she, she been telling it all day. <laughs> he haven't been telling everything. <laughs> you told the main thing. Hey, said, hey, don't say it. Don't say it. I'm I not going to talk about it. Don't say they, it. They said, do not talk about it. <laughs> Oh, about the story. Ah, about it. Don't worry about it. Oh. <laughs> she it's okay. Oh. It's okay. It. It's going to be it great. Yes, it's okay. God. It's going to be great. That's well, what you need yeah, to Yeah, the know. show is, is definitely going to be lit. Um, it start off the first first episode. You got um, some crazy drama at the end of the first episode. Yeah. Um, Why you gotta look down here? <laughs> this is you. <laughs> That's she straight at me. Yeah. She looks straight at me uh, like, yeah, she's a troublemaker. Uh. No, I didn't say she was a tr- I no. didn't say you were troublemaker. That's the look you like. But it, it, it is um, <laughs> she, definitely deep. She definitely has a, a real storyline this this six season. And they still uh, dealing series. with it right now. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, real life. It is real. It's, it's gonna get it better. It's real. <laughs> it better get better. <laughs> It, it will. will. That's yeah, right. It will. It will get better. What else you got, Bolton? We got DJ Ballistic up in here saying, Escape is for the aunties and the OGs. Much love to y'all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, now. Somebody okay. just told me. I just seen in the comments said that we have went to the aunt, from aunties to the nieces. I, I was thinking about you because she don't want to be no auntie. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm an auntie yet. I feel like Girl, I'm we talking about nieces, nieces, some nieces y'all, y'all don't look like it's aunties. It's okay, auntie. <laughs> nah, hell no. It's okay, <laughs> auntie. <laughs> Hey, whatever. It's all good. And we got no. Barry High Times up in here saying, we need an escape featuring Be Real Track. Hey. Okay. I would, I'd be honored. Mm-hmm. Are you crazy? Yeah. I would all love right. that. Yes. I would what? definitely get on a track well, just with y'all. Send, yeah, you do. That's no. checklist shit. You do right tracks too? Or you, or you sometimes. Have yeah, you, no, sometimes you? I do tracks. Okay. But like, you know, when I'm in the writing mode, mm-hmm. it's... I you know I get with producers I can't like do both at the mm-hmm. same time. Yeah, it's I got tough. you. Dope. The production is too meticulous. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like it, it's nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we got abnormal mother TV up in here asking candy. What are those toys called? Asking for a friend. <laughs> Bedroom candy. Um, that's the name of my toy line. Is bedroomcandy.com. K A N D I. Show them the site, Bolton. Yeah, she got uh, so much stuff on there. You I got just so go. many toys on there. Yes. Like it's some fun stuff on there, really. 
Bolton already probably uh, got himself a basket full of shit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just like, hell yeah. Yeah, eight on two. Oh, we oh, just got the, the, yeah, peach the new one. You got the mic drop. Mic drop. That's oh, the wow. one. Oh wow! Um, <laughs> the little bullet. That's the rocket and the turbo turbo bow waterproof. We got some waterproof ones. So you want to get in the water? You know, you won't get electrocuted. Hey man. Oh boy. Mm. There's the um, helping hand right there. The helping oh, hand. It, it may not look like much, but that thing. It's kind of short, is it? <laughs> no, it stretches. Let's talk about this. Yeah. It stretches. Okay, let's talk about and this little short that long, helping that's hand. That's why I said your mouth goes at one end while you yeah. work in the middle. I don't need no helping hand. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, I'm all right. <laughs> the other ones. I love the candy kisses. It looks like a lipstick, and you. Yeah. Can, and sometimes you can just throw it in your purse, and nobody will even know you're carrying around a vibrator. The yeah. Groove, that one, it has a remote control. So if you're in a relationship and you want her to put that in her panties, y'all go out to the club. You can actually ah. make it vibrate to music, so she go to the club. Hey. Didn't y'all? Didn't y'all do that at, at, at one show? of your events? Yeah, 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 yeah. And someone made a big deal out of it, but like, yeah, I, <laughs> I thought even, it was hilarious. Yeah, I mean, I didn't understand. <laughs> Why they were so uptight, but hey, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> they needed that. <laughs> they needed it. They needed How it. How about that it? That one, they were so Ooh, uptight. Oh, the Luxa collection, the Allure has that hook in there. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah, that hook is everything. Oh, wow. wow. The um, the Amaze. I always like dual vibrators. Me personally, you gotta mm. kickle, tickle the 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 clit and go in the inside at the same time. It's always great. All areas <laughs> must go. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Getting in touch is a finger vibrator, but actually. Just, she got it yeah. all sizes. Hey, man, okay. it's a lot. I don't know. I didn't know y'all was going to let me go ahead and break it down. Oh, like, break hey. it down, boo. Break it down. <laughs> save save some relationships more. out there. We, we are still free flow more. right here. Go to the website. I said save the relationships out there. That's right. Yeah. Save the relationship. All right. What else you got up there? And everybody in the chat is saying shout out to Escape and thank you guys so much to come into Be Real TV. Thank, thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you for having, having us. us. For real. Yes. Hey, thank you for being thank here. You. It's been fun. Word up. We're going to cut to this break. Make sure you fuck with Escape. All right. I can't wait to get here. My husband told me, you, that, that's Cypress Hill. That's NYC salute to everybody that came out. Um, day two was much better than day one. And I don't mean just energy, just things, you know, were locked in a little bit better. We dialed in a proper set, um, you know, with now Send Dog not being able to come with us. Um, so we crafted the set a little bit better. The pace was better. Uh, the sound was dope. <laughs> Fucking Brooklyn, I had to drop some biggies, you know. Go Brooklyn! Go Brooklyn! Brooklyn was in the house. Brooklyn always represents though, but last night was dope as fuck. Always a pleasure. I have to say that that crowd was really, really, really loud. I mean, second show of the tour, usually, you know, everything is starting to warm up. But from what I hear, it was the first time in like over 10 years that Slipknot played like in New York. So that was one. And uh, we're getting oiled up ourselves with, uh, you know, not having sin with us. You know, we got to make sure that our machine is rolling good and it's starting to come together. But one cool thing that I, I got to do, I don't know if anybody else did it, but me and Trace, we went and we, uh, we went to inside the Brooklyn Nets practice court area, and we were shooting some hoops. And that was always cool. It's been a minute since I've been out on the court, and it kind of showed, because, you know, I was 50-50 with my shots. But I'm sure that, you know, we'll be able to get you some footage since you can see us on the court. It was dope, you know what I mean? We got a chance to spend a day in New York before, um, before the actual show, so we got a day off. We walked around in the city. Something I always do whenever I get to New York City because I feel like that's home away from home for me and for the group because uh, a lot of people don't know. They accepted us in um, New York City 
before anywhere else. You know what I mean? It's like that old saying, if you can make it there, you make it anywhere. And uh, pretty much New York accepted us before anyone else. So we planted roots there. And, you know, basically we spend a lot of time in NYC. So always coming back is, is a big deal. We do our own shows, as a lot of you fans might know. We do our Haunted Hill every October. We're going to be doing that, Terminal 5, uh, later on this year. So, you know, stay tuned for that. But, um, yeah, it was good to walk around the city. But I'll tell you what. The dopest shit was getting to walk around the city smoking weed like nobody's fucking business. I mean, look, we had our, we've been doing this shit on the sneak for years in New York, you know, hiding around corners, you know, smoking whatever, you know, trying to be low-key and shit. And we, you know, smoking joints is high-key all the time. It doesn't matter where the fuck you're at. But now you could just be out in the open, walk right by a police officer and be smoking ain't telling you shit that was awesome that that was that's like a new ritual that i'm gonna do but fast forwarding to the show um the crowd was incredible i mean uh these folks were were on hit from song one to you know the ending and the ending was just it was like someone threw a hand grenade and shit just exploded i mean it was on the money and and uh you know, salute to those fans that came out to, to that night because it was incredible. The crowd's reaction to when uh, we uh, gave love to Sin and had the crowd saying, I love you, Sin Dog, you know, that, that was a powerful moment because, you know, we got to hold it down for our brother. And they really were giving us love knowing that, you know, we were down one. But, just because we're down one, that doesn't mean that we out and we are representing and we will represent for this whole damn tour. So um, that was that was a real good feel good moment when they gave love. The whole crowd was like, we love you, Cinda. And that was our we wanted. To, to, to send a message to send dog so um, at the end of the set and, and people were showing love to send when I explained sort of what what's going on with him um, you know they were all showing mad love and uh, you know I, I, I asked the crowd to say we love you send dog at the end of the set we counted them One, off and everything two, and three. Uh, the whole building just showed mad Thank love so um, salute to them for that they sent that positive energy to send dog and uh, he's doing much better. Again. Show 10. Before show 10, we had a day off in Kentucky. I mean, we're playing in Cincinnati, Ohio. But we had a day off in Kentucky where we met with our weed that we sent forward so that we couldn't, you know, because we couldn't take it into Canada. And we gave it to these guys and they stuck their shitty little fingers in our jars. I didn't have a jar. I just want to put that out there, Miss P.O. I didn't have a jar, all right? We suffered from what is known as pincher bugs. Which is the pinching of the jars. Not one jar, not two jars, all jars. Probably close to like five jars, all of them. And you don't, you don't do that. Any stone in their right mind is uh, gonna know not to pinch somebody else's jar. 
I don't care if you're holding it for, for, for someone or anything like that, unless you ask them and they say, yo, man, you can take a little bit. Fortunately for them, we were able to get, um, you know, some other good flavors uh, to hold us over on this day off. Salute to Dan Halen, AKA Coach Dan over there for, um, you know, making a couple of calls and saving the day, if you will. Karma has a funny way of working its way to people that are like that. They pinched half of every jar, probably over half. You know, um, that's like finger banging somebody's girlfriend. Oh! What are you fucking doing? <laughs> that's totally out of line. As a matter of fact, we might break their fucking fingers before the tour's over. But it's just some weed, they could have it, you know what I mean? It's just, you don't do that. You don't stick your hands in somebody's jar without asking. That's just a no-go. But uh, we enjoyed our day off nonetheless. We, you know, started with the wake and bake breakfast. We had to walk like two miles. Um, Eric, Bobo, Trace, and myself, because Trace likes to walk. And, you know, so we put steps to it and, uh, you know, got our stepping in. It was a great breakfast, too. We got served by, like, a 90-year-old lady who was just sweet. She was very funny. She was, you know, a sweet lady. And uh, that place has been there for, or she's been going to that place for 65 years. We walked back in the hot fucking sun because uh, it is hot in, um, in Kentucky right now and even in Cincinnati um, which is where we were staying a ton um, but we went on a shoe hunt there there happened to be a, a, a shoe store there and guess what your boy scored I'd show them to you but they're in our shit over there some fresh patent leather red Jordans I've been looking for these bitches all over the place didn't have my size. Finally, a little spot in Kentucky, you know what I'm saying? Found the shoes. And uh, Haggle Master over there, DJ Lord, you know, got us a discount <laughs> on said shoes and other shoes and shoes and shoes. I end up buying another pair of shoes, y'all. But I'm saying, it goes, it's, it's for the outfit, it's for the stage, you see what I mean? But I found a Jordan 11s in size 13 and Homie gave me a price, you know, a, a deal I couldn't refuse. As a matter of fact, I got a deal for everybody. So we all got shoes. So don't make it look like it's just me. You see what I'm saying? See how fast I'm coming to the camp? Don't make it look like it's still just me, Dr. Green Thumb. Thank you, DJ Lord, for the haggles. Um, you know, so I mean, you know, I still, I'm still looking for the Air Maxes. The Jordans were just extra. You know, Ke Trace kept trying to be like, there they go. There they go. Nudge, there they go. And I was like, I, I know, I know. And you know, I broke down. I said, fuck it, it's my birthday in a couple days. I'm just gonna treat myself instead of cheating myself. You know what I'm saying? So I snatched them, uh, them red patent leathers. You'll see them on stage pretty soon. I don't wanna scuff them though. <laughs> You motherfuckers ready? And it was like, oh. so that was dope. Now, fast forward to the show. <laughs> On my opening part, I got 25 minutes now. 25 minutes, yo. To uh, get the crowd warm. Cypress Hill, we've been coming to Cincinnati, Ohio for a number of years. A lot of, a lot of time, it was in the early 90s and early 2000s with uh, Smoke and Grooves both tours, Lollapalooza, both the tours we did there, and a couple of other things. TV. Like I'm on the 
motherfucker. We know it. But hey, it was worth it. And fortunately for us, we had a backup system today to make this happen for you properly. Let's go. All right, first one of the day. I haven't seen these before, but we got Dan Wayne up in here saying he made some homemade beef pasties. Oh, word. Ooh. Meat pies. Meat the pie. That is a high res photo. Would you like a meat the pie? A meat Zoom pie. In. Awesome. I would Bring take it. a meat the pie. That's a meat the pie. Would you like a meat the pie? Would you want the meat the pie? Good. Hell yeah. That looks cool. It's fucking A. Hell yeah. Bonados. Fucking hell yeah. Good, my. I like the little uh, tell you what the crust of it, the crust of it. Let me tell you something. Sounds like Sam Elliott there. <laughs> the crust of it. <laughs> <laughs> he did, right? He yeah. did. <laughs> just watch. Let me tell you what. Don't believe me? Just watch. And we got Dean Jones up in here. He didn't say what these are, but I think they're pork chops. Ooh, they look like boneless pork chops. They look good. They look, mm. okay. they look amazing. <laughs> you want a cunt pie? That looks delish. It's so delish. And we got uh, Fabian up in here. Little homemade dishes are the best. That's what he's saying. Mm, you are correct. Little tapatio. Mm. Always. Um, I see always. you did the canned corn, but it looked like you went with fresh string beans, so... Big ups on Damn, that. Damn, he said, I see you did the canned corn. Did you but say before right. you like the canned bad. corn? I like it, bro. No, but you I just... grew up eating canned vegetables, so I, I like them still. Yeah, nice. But fresh vegetables are definitely better. That's awesome. Add some cheese to that. Awesome. Where? Add some queso. Where? Korean barbecue style. Oh. Mm. No. I guess so. A little shredded cheese on the potatoes. No, that looks like a very delicious meal. For sure. Yes, it does look delicious. I'm in. And uh, this one's pretty big, too. We got Raul up in here with the 4x4 four four burger. Oh! Uh, no God way. damn. Damn. That's not even smash burgers. Same. Those are burgers. Pickles, onions, cheddar cheese, and four quarter pound patties. That's a lot of cholesterol. Bring it. It's a pound, yep. That is wild. Hey, you're going to like not shit right for a week. Yeah, you're not going to shit right <laughs> for a couple weeks. <laughs> Take out those pickles. Oh. Take out the pickles. Oh. <laughs> the pickles. That's, all, that's all you got. <laughs> yeah. Take out the fucking Just, pickles, yeah. huh? Straight protein. Extra extra Let me just take extra these onions. fucking pickles out, buddy. Depends on the pickles. Oh, yeah, I don't like them pickle? sweet pickles, man. Those things are nasty. The bread and butter ones, not down bread and butter, but a regular like dough pickles on a burger. Yes. Give me extra. Absolutely. But no, none of the buttery and none of the sweet. That's the bread and butter. Oh, uh, yeah. Nah, nah, we're, we're good, B. That. Yeah, man. Off with their heads. Let me tell you something. Mm. Right. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. <laughs> and we got abnormal mother up in here saying iced tea walk of fame ceremony. I got a fist. I got to fist bump iced tea and a photo bomb a picture of a fan with Mike Epps. That's Hell my, yeah! That's yeah, my, she's like that's me in the back. Yeah, yeah. Nice work. Uh, that, hey, what's funny is that's my home girl from the Laker games taking a picture with Mike Epps. <laughs> is it? Uh, yeah. What's up? Yeah. That's tight. Uh, yeah, she be like she's like one of the number one Laker supporter fans out there. She be at everything. It's crazy. I like that. Salute. Word. Salute. Who, who that is? Uh, some video from it? Yep. Yo, this nice. is Ice T. Yo, this is Ice T. That's OG. Yeah, that's right there. Right. And I want to thank you for the star yeah, Hollywood he's... Walk of Fame. He's so cool. Dude. Where's I like, T? I like the sp his, uh, his speech at the end. Yeah. He's the best. Oh, Thanks, awesome. to all the oh, Thanks to all the haters. Thanks to all the haters. Like a haters ball. Remember that one? <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> And he's got some classic albums too. A lot of people know him as actor, you know what I mean? And rightfully so, because he's He's got his chops. He's got his chops. But man, go back and listen to Rhyme Pays. OG. Power. OG gangster. Original gangster OG. That's such a banger. Yeah, like and uh the, I what was it? The iceberg, Lethal Weapon. You played yourself. Man, he got so many heaters. He's, yeah, he he had he had some songs with One of the mm -hmm. all there's a gangster rap for sure. Yeah, for sure. What shows was he on? Uh, so was it NC or was Law, Law and Order. Order? Law and Order. He's been on that for the like longest years, running, right? The longest running character. Male, wow. yeah. yeah. Male, Male character. character. There you go. 10, 15 yeah. years at least? At least, yeah. Wow. At least 10 years. Because her colleague, the, 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 um, the lady that's her partner in the on the show is yeah. female. Yeah. Longest, uh, longest female running. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That part. Yeah, she's got, she's got the record, yo. 
Yeah, dude. Law and Order's been out forever. I used to watch in the 80s, the original one. Like, that was where it started. Like, it was one of them. We went through a couple, and then the, all the spinoffs came in the later 90s. Yeah, but how many spinoffs were there? I feel like there was, a like, 1,500 million. There is. There probably times was. a thousand. I, there's got to be times. Like, 20,000. <laughs> All right, next. There is seven spin-offs. <laughs> oh, oh, that's it? Oh, uh, dude. Holy oh, God. <laughs> Thought there was God. a thousand. It's like a team. All right, next. And uh, next up in here, we got Brent saying he's making distillate all the way in Michigan. Look at him. What up, Brett? Yeah. Brent. Short path on Brent. Brent. Sorry, Brent. Colton. God damn it. Oh, yeah, no. That Brent. Is. Little VTA, yep. Mm -hmm. Like Brent from The Office. Brent. What are you trying to point out, Aton? No, I just need an ashtray. I don't oh, need an ashtray. Oh, do you? Yeah. Use your mouth. I respect the table. Yeah. All right, next. I thought he was going to throw it. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. would have been fucked up. Oh, yeah. Right. Next up in here, we got Jeffro with uh, somebody's dislocated index finger. Ooh, Ow. look at that. Look at that. Wow. We want to oh, see the I violence. I swear shit. that's exactly what my girl's pinky looked like. She got caught in a door. Ooh. <laughs> she was like, I think my finger might be broken. How <laughs> do you think? <laughs> the thing was literally to the side. It was ridiculous. Oh, it's it's amazing. It had pins put in it. It was terrible. Ah, look at that. Ah. It looked, yeah, look at that. That's Ooh. good. Yeah, that that is. Is. So, you that snap it. Nasty looking. Yeah, no, that doesn't. You just snap it into place, like real quick, like hold it, just bow. Yeah. Oh, you got to no, bite thanks. down, boy. Mm. That's going to mm. hurt. Yeah, it does. All right. <laughs> and we got Smokestack Mac up in here saying doing some trim work while smoking on a hash hole. There you go. That looks nice. nice. Right? Mm -hmm. that looks yummy. Mm -hmm. As Aton would say. Big heads. Excellent. Big like trichome heads. Looks good. What is that, OG? No, it could be. It could be. It has that color. It looked like it. Yep. Not really. It, nah, it Not could really. be. Yeah, you know. It looks good. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate right. you, Nemesis. Oh, damn. <laughs> this came to violence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's crazy. We are both on the same table. Yeah. F him. Oh. <laughs> just noticed. Oh, what the fuck? Any day. Oh, he just noticed. Damn. <laughs> Stoner. <laughs> oh, man. And we got Mike Lanza up, and you're saying good vibes over in Philly. Oh. Yes. Salute. Salute to cold ass Philly vibes. Word. Every third child. Philly is a dope spot. It is. Fuck your teams, but you got a dope city. God damn it. I've only ever been there for like work. Yeah. Never got to go like hang out. Like it's a it's time. a it's a cool spot. It like is. Philly's Philly's fun. History. Yeah, there's a lot of shit to do out there. Um we used to like back early, early in the early days. Sometimes Muggs and I would cross over, the, you know, go over to Philly from New York, and go to some of the clubs down there, and just vibe out. Mm. And they had a thriving hip hop, you know, scene down there. Hell obviously, yeah. you know, it's Philly. That's um, crazy. So is that close to Philly? I mean, to New York? Yeah, about three hours or something like yeah, that. Like two right? and a half, three hours. Oh, they wow. say. Yeah, I mean that's Philly is home to some of the best DJs in the world, oh, yeah. you know. Jazzy Jeff, Cash Money. Yep. Uh yeah. man. The that's lineage crazy. is crazy in yeah. terms of DJing. Right. Yeah, for real. DJ Ran. What up, DJ Ran? And we got Jose up in here saying, I need a Cypress Hill album Pop Funko. Oh, you made that? That's pretty oh, cool. It. He said I need. Oh. That's dope. Awesome. That's pretty cool. I like how they did that. He's got space for you right there. Well done. Should have been in my lab. Holler if you hear me. Make a little lab for, for lab thumb. Oh, that's, that's dope. That's tight. Dope. Excellent. That's pretty cool. That is cool. Run DMC. All the little homies, yep. Oh, sick. Sick, dude. Look at that. He got Ice-T, Ice Cube. <laughs> hey, yo, this is Ice. Hey yo, hey yo, this is Ice T. <laughs> Where's oh, Les? You got your Funko man. Hey yo, this is Ice T. That's supposed to he be. He loves tea? doing it. Too. Yeah, he. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him at the office the other day. He told me he was. He says something. Hey yo, he goes. Hey yo, Pedro. Hey yo, what's up? It's Ice T. Just out of nowhere. <laughs> He's gonna make a shirt of that. That's crazy. Uh, hey yo, <laughs> Ice T. All right, what else you got? 
And we got uh, one Lake Show 7 up in here saying sad news right now. We just found out our dog Cody ran oh. away from the big storm in Los Angeles. Oh, oh that's I hope you find him. Yeah, we hope you find him. Yeah. yeah. Put up tons hope of he comes home. Yeah, if you give us pictures of your dog. We'll post it. Cody yeah. or Kobe? Cody. 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 I hope you find him for sure. For sure. Sh- All right. What else? And we got Moki Customs up in here saying third snow in Tucson this year. Look at that. Toxin. All right. Look at that. Damn, that's a Wait, snowman. That's a snowman for real right there. How about buddy? this oh, snowman? Oh, damn. On strapped cool. up. Uh, <laughs> nice. but even on the hood, though. That's crazy. Don't come up in here. <laughs> Word up. Don't bring your ass up in here. Uh. Rusty ain't playing. Yeah. Smoke. <laughs> uh, mm. And nah. next up in here, we got Zach, and he's saying, wanted to show you this massive jump in the MGM arena last year with Slipknot. First time seeing you guys live, and they held the crowd in the palm of their hand. Well, thank you, my friend. We tried. So. We had these Slipknotians nodding it up. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. That's not crowd. That's dope. How could you not love that? That was so much fun. <laughs> See what I did there? That was one of the best Vegas crowds. Yeah, oh, Vegas. Oh, that was Vegas. 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 Yeah, and they're and, and usually Las Vegas crowds ain't that crazy. These motherfuckers were yeah, awesome. They're good. This place so, was packed. Yes, mm-hmm. it was. Excellent. Salute to you, my friend, for, for grabbing that footage and, and uh, enjoying our set, if that was your first time seeing it, which for many Slipknot fans, it was definitely their first time seeing it. So thank you for the embrace, man, and welcome to the community. Dude, was that uh, at that uh, new arena over in Vegas? Yeah. The newer, one of the newer ones? Yes, mm-hmm. it is, sir. M- was it MGM or something? No, yep. that was MGM, yeah. yeah. All right. MGM, nice. And uh, last one, we got Jose up in here saying, look at what I found. I told the dispensaries I can't smoke that because that's what the doctor recommended. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Dude, some people are going to try to take it. They're going to try to take it and make it good, and it's not that. The term, at least. Look, boof is boof. Don't don't confuse the term. Yeah. Right, super boof, like boof means shit. Yeah, it's basically super saying shit. super shit. Exactly, <laughs> super you shit. Can't polish a turd. It's still you can't a turd. polish but not a good. turd. Exactly. <laughs> you could smear a turd. You can't oh. polish it on your shoe. Yep. Super shit. <laughs> then it smells worse. <laughs> and then you wipe it on <laughs> someone's carpet. You take that super shit and stick it where the sun <laughs> don't shine. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for the submissions. Keep them coming to be real TV contest at gmail.com and we will put them on. It is now time for the voices from the insane asylum to speak. That means y'all in the live chat and everywhere else. Got a comment, question, shout out, suggestion. Make it happen. Welcome to the insane asylum. All right, let's do this. First one up of the day, we got Adam up in here saying, despite the interruptions, this has been a dope week on the Dr. Greentham show. Well, thank you. Hell yeah. It's been tough to get through, but, you know, here we are. And we got Kiko from the South saying, y'all should post AT&T's phone number (laughs) so we can all call them and give them a complaint. Oh, man. Yeah, (laughs) because they still haven't finished their job. We're on a backup system that's more reliable right now, but, like, you know, yeah. Shout out to Dan. We're going to do that on Monday. If you we're gonna get we're gonna get that number. What what were you gonna say, Pedro? No, uh, they call him. They're just gonna talk to uh, Buddy. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna talk to Buddy. Yeah. All right, to they're gonna put you on hold for like three hours. <laughs> what a name! <laughs> and we got Joe Arson up in here asking, "Have any of you seen the trailer for the new Children of the Corn?" No, I have no. Not. nope. But that story premise still scares me. It does. Yeah. Bunch of like a good, like, isn't it about like you live out in the like the yeah. farmland? If and you then... lived out there and you saw that, yeah, I think you would, yeah, man, I'm good, <laughs> yeah, I'm good too, actually. <laughs> that's, that's a movie, like, a it oh, yeah, it's a classic, yeah, well. it's a cl- yeah, Stephen it's, King, it's a yes, it's a classic yeah. Stephen King movie, Pedro. Oh, you okay. like violence, and I know you do. Um, it's a movie yeah. for you, you might be a little campy Cause, by cause now, I've heard it. I've heard of it, but I never realized. Well, oh, well, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of children of the corns. Nightmares. It's Read almost like well, night. It's almost like Friday the Thirteenth Part Twenty Five now. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll check it out. All right. 
And we got Johnny Man. Walker up in here saying, if y'all drop a fat nug on the floor while rolling up, do you pick it up and smoke it or throw it away? I mean, I depends know. what kind of floor. Like, yeah. drop yeah, it in yeah. some nasty shit. It's different. <laughs> Falls in a puddle? Hell yeah. no. Yeah, if, it, no. if the floor is dirty, nasty, dusty, yeah. crusty, yeah. muddy, no. Yeah. No. I'm picking it up. But if it's clean, pick yeah. it up, blow it off. That's not a okay. Yeah. Not the end of the world, guys. Nah. Word. We got White Rhino up in here asking the table, Big Daddy Kane or Cool G Rap? Damn. That's Ooh. A, that's a tough one. I'll let man. you start. That's not a fair question. That's not a, yeah. That's, that's, tough. that's not a fucking fair question. Um, I loved Big Daddy Kane, but Cool G Rap was different. He didn't make the bigger songs like Kane did, but his, his shit was just different. So I have to mm. go with Cool G Rap, even though Kane was a monster, monster too. I just felt like Coogee rap slightly a, a bigger beast in terms of the bar and stylistic aspect. I got it. Yeah. I love Kane, but I definitely go Cool G rap all day. He was one of the first people when I was young to listen and putting a story together. You know, like yeah. when he told when he rhymed, you could literally picture it, you know, like yeah. on the run. I remember being in the car with him the whole time. And, and for like me, every step of that song. And for me, you know, like Kane was dope, but he smoothed it out. Absolutely. Whereas Cool G Rap always kept it raw. And I was always like more, you know, inclined to the raw. Yeah. Versus the smooth. I would say my pick would be Big Daddy Kane. Okay. As my favorite. Yeah. Not saying he has better bars. Because, right. like you said, it's hard to it's judge. It's hard to judge that. But yeah. I will say Big Daddy Kane's first album, Long Live the Kane influenced me in a way that forever changed my life and just like listening to that album i knew i wanted more of this in my life and yeah and then i just i know that album like the back of my hand too it's like i can you can don't i'll lip sync most of it you know what i mean hmm. just like it's just one of those albums me but cool g rap's first album man poison it's a demo all that man so good yep all right and we got Marbell up in here <coughs> saying Bolton needs a toy because his thing don't work. Dang. <laughs> Damn. Ouch. Oh my wow. God. You guys know that much about each other? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure his mother might have said something. Ah. Ouch. <laughs> seen the... I just use that toy when I'm uh, in between uh, rounds. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> and we got Sven up in here saying crazy thing here in New York City. They're putting fentanyl strips in the bathroom right now at the bar to test your drugs. It's yep. that bad out here. What the what the and they're, he's asking, are they doing that by you guys? Oh, absolutely. There's, I hope. I know people that you know still are on the you know providing you know situations aside, and they will test product before it, it you know just like I want to show you this is what it is and. They'll do it, and that's that, because it's really at an alarming rate right now. But yeah, they, I mean, they, there's people that pass out strips to people so they can they can test and make sure that the product they are trying to use or give to someone is not going to kill someone. Yeah, I better that they're better that they're testing people's shit for them. Yeah, man. Than to let them like possibly die. But yeah. You know what the problem is with that? How it can't be accurate, right? If you're mixing fentanyl with coke. Fentanyl, like you're using such a tiny amount, right? Mm -hmm. So the bit that you could pick up and test can have zero fentanyl. Mm -hmm. And then the scoop right next to it could have a concentration that can kill five people. It's the See what I'm saying? It's the risk of well, any of it. They're, at least they're doing something. Yeah, no, I hear you. Yeah. It's just, it's Whether, just uh, We don't really know how accurate that is. Yeah. But, but, I mean. At least they're trying something. Yeah, know? man. I mean, the fact of the matter is it's really out there. Bad. And we got Rosa and Ricky up in here saying, Happy Friday to all. Want to get good vibes for my hubby, Edwin, who has not been doing well health-wise, but soldiering through. Much love. Yeah. Edwin. Uh, hang in there, bud. Ed oh. vibes. Edwin, oh. we want to send you positive energy. We want to send you healing vibes. Yes. You know what I mean? We want to send you love and, uh, you know, try meditating and connecting to this love and this vibration that we're sending you, man. Um, and have faith that you could heal up. Yes, we got you. All the positive vibes and energy to you. 
And we got Rex up in here saying, Callie Blaze's expression says it all when B brought up Takashi 6 ix 9 <laughs> yeah, I didn't know dude. why they put it was on the screen. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to say something so bad, like, fuck that cunt or something, like, yeah. so bad. Yeah, you I could, you could say that, but that wouldn't have been. I wouldn't. Have. That <laughs> would, I, I'm saying I, I could feel why you would say that. But right. I didn't. But you, and you see. didn't. And that was good because it was a, a certain point that we were making right. with just putting out songs as opposed to like, you know, expressing how we feel about his character. That's why I left it out, man. I yeah, no, that was pro. It, but I guess they went to my fans because I was filled with rage. Well. I kept it quiet. <laughs> yes, I did. And we got D Mario up in here saying, watching Puffin with my girl. Much love all the way from Chicago. Salute what up? to y'all in the shy. Smoke. Salute. Happy Friday. That's what I was trying to reach for, like when I was talking about her acting. I was trying to reach for the shy, but I wasn't sure if it was power or the shy, because you know, like I had gotten it mixed up, being a little nervous asking the question. Yeah. But it was totally about her, you know, being on the shy because I remember watching the episode where she was talking about it, and as it's leading up to her going up to to film the first one, she was nervous as fuck, you know, like. Mm -hmm. But. I mean, she stuck it out and she killed it. It was awesome. She was also talking with her husband about how, you know, there's going to be some, you know, like, because in every TV show that's explicit, there are sex scenes. And, you know, she had to explain to him the nature of that, you know, hey, this character is going to have sex at some point. Right. On camera. Not porn stuff, right, right, but I'm right. saying. Just. And, you know, imagine, have, you know, like, you got to have that conversation. Yeah. Skip on that it's one. Tough. This is man. It's yeah. Tough in the acting world when you're in a marriage or relationship of some sort sure. and that yeah. you gotta drop that one on them. Like, uh, we're gonna have a sex scene and there's nudity and <laughs> yeah. and the yeah. best is when people go, like, Oh, it's just acting. Yeah. Tell that Brad and Angelina who met on set. Yeah. So many of these people have met on set, broken up marriages while filming a movie. Oh yeah. It's so, out there. Yeah. You know, you heard about the guy that's in that uh, Netflix series, You, right? The one about the guy that stalks the women or whatever, yeah. right? Like, so he's asked for the next season that he's in to have no more sex scenes or, like, even kissing scenes because he feels he will he wants to remain faithful to his wife. Yeah. Makes sense. Isn't that show over, though? Or they have, like... He's just been requesting that, like, in whatever he's doing, like... Or I think that I think that he's still working on maybe another one. He was in the news for it. Gotcha. I was like, all right, could be. All right, next. And we got Jesus up in here saying, "I ran out of weed. Didn't go to the dispensary, or I was gonna miss the show. I'm, mm. I'm weedless right now." Wow, oh, wow, mm. that hurts. Hurry up. And we got a uh, Jang Jog up in here saying, "Shout to the Deftones on their Mark Jacobs collab and pop up concert in New York City last night." Boom. Yeah, it looked dope. Salute to the Deftones and the Strong up there and all their fans uh, representing. Yeah, it was dope. Yeah, uh, you know, Risa had she had the first like couple of live streams of it. She was from her phone, from her account. It was tight. Oh, that's dope. Awesome. Cuzzo. Yep. We got K Mac up in here saying, "Damn, Tom Sizemore was a great actor. Had a lot of demons though." Yeah, it yeah, did. Did he finally? Did he die? Did he pass? I know that they're. I know the family said that. Yeah, they 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 announced it. They were putting him on um on the on the care that's basically you know. Uh, yeah, three days ago they decided the end of life. Yeah, end of uh, life damn. care. Yeah, so which means they're deciding on how to do it. Yeah, basically, hospice probably. All the arrangements, the hospice, and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, it's, man. It's, he's probably beyond help at this yeah. point. I mean, he did a lot to himself. <sighs> great yeah. act, great actor, he and he was a cool dude. One but he, best. you know, he had his demons, and you know. He did. Prayers to him in, in, you know, his upcoming transition. And shout to Big J21. Thank you so much for the super chat. The word up. Thank you very much for that, bro. And we got Eric V up in here saying, Yo, B, can I get a birthday shout out and a flip or a shot? All right, wow. I'll do a shot. Uh, happy birthday, Eric V. Much love to you for being here with us on your birthday. May you smoke that good, good shit and not be presented no boof. On the day of your birth. Where's Rakim at? And if that friend should <laughs> arise that he presents you with the boof, you slap it right out of his hand and go get yourself some top shelf, baby. Smoke. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's a celebration. And we got Marbell back up in here, or Marbles. 
Oh. <laughs> B, from Cubano to Cubano, why do you still have this Blanco? And he's saying, Dro, what's up with the red loke? Be like Clay's and Crip Minus. Uh, and he's saying, and wear blue. Don't be a jabroni like Colton. Oh. He said Clay's. He called you Clay's. Damn, you went in Cali everybody. Clay's. <laughs> Cali Clay's. Cali Clay's. <laughs> I like Clays. that. And he's also saying, good. Colton, you insane in the brain, rapping like you on cane. Woo. My bars hit like a train. You better know my name before I'll put you in a frame. Ooh. You better know my fame, he's saying. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> then somehow I feel like you have something ready. I actually don't. Oh, oh he got you today. He did not, not get me today. <laughs> Those <were> Damn. Damn. <laughs> oh. Damn, Marbell smashed on you, homie. Oh, Marbell got Great. you at the bar. No. <laughs> he he's like, smash. No. He shot you like a like no. off face. Even Dro's saying it happened, bro. Oh, Damn. Man. <laughs> Turning red up here, punching <laughs> the air. He's, he's going like Dustin. He's, he's Cuba Gooding, punching the air right Cuba now. That's tight. Uh, he's air fighting. <laughs> Some people play air guitar. <laughs> he's, air <laughs> he's air fighting. Air punching. All right. And we got a mic up in here saying, "Happy De La Day. Rest in peace to the God Plug Two. Yes. yes. Congratulations. Yes. Salute. To Salute. Plug two. Awesome. And we got Florida Nick up in here saying Callie and B have a lot of shots or dabs coming in from the no, show earlier. Nope, no, we, nope, we no, don't. We called that off for today because <laughs> it was such a special show with the ladies. Yeah, yeah. salute to the ladies for dropping in. Uh, they got a hell of a hectic schedule, and uh, they were awesome. So salute to the ladies at the skate. Yeah, she, she. <laughs> And we got Osiris TV up in here saying the Skittles Funky smokes really well. Mm. Highly recommend picking that one up. Pick it up. Pick it up. It's a good tip. It is a good tip. We got some new tips coming out today at 420 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 720 Eastern. We got the Firefly. That's right. The oh, Firefly. So Beautiful. www.funkyfilltips.com. It's a... And, uh, you know. It's the chef's kiss. It's the chef's kiss. Puffing on one right now. It's a little piece. Damn, Dro. Yeah, Dro. Look I at that. Can't, I just can't show it. I know. Way to go. Yeah. Bow. I hear you. I hear you, Dro. <laughs> and we got Michelle up in here saying, Hey, guys, it's my son's 16th birthday on Monday. Could you please give him a shout out now? I'm in the future in Australia. He's walking around the house right now. His name is Harley, named after the motorcycle. Right on. Happy Hallie. birthday, Harley. Happy birthday, Harley. <laughs> Happy birthday, Harley. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. 16. Damn. Hmm. Hmm. It's just about to begin. It's all about to begin. Yeah. All, all over again. <laughs> yep. In a different way. Oh, man. Salute, Charlie. Make some wise decisions. Don't be like your friends uh, fucking up here and there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stay in the right lanes. Party responsibly. Yes. Man. I always thought turning 16, that was like the ultimate freedom, like getting your driver's license. You can finally mm. leave the house, go drive mm. wherever you want to go. Yeah, Shit, baby. Maybe in Minnesota. Yeah. That was the best. That was like the best <laughs> age to turn, I thought. <laughs> wow. It was yeah. 16. It was the best. Wow. Yeah, get, Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. You only got a permit, and then you can get your license at 17. Yeah. You can get a learner's permit and drive with somebody else, and then you yeah. have to be 17. Same here. Before you can get your license. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, 14, right? Wasn't 14? I think Yeah, was, you guys was like uh, was 15 or 15 and a half. 15 or is permit, 16 15. is license. Yeah, 15. There you go. In Minnesota, um, farmers, their kids can get a farmer's permit at 15. And in South Dakota, at age 14, they can get a farmer's permit. So you see kids driving around at 14 and 15 in Minnesota Whoa. and South Dakota. Yup. Damn. Yup. Nobody on the road. It's all good. Yeah. And we got Up is Down up in here saying, Happy Friday, Green Thumb Crew. Did y'all catch season three of The Mandalorian? Yes. I, oh. I caught up last night. Dude. That was pretty good. It's pretty good. Pretty fucking good, man. Yeah, hey, oh. man. Need more. They, 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 it, Need was, more. it was a nice ending. Yeah, I mean, Mando, for the first episode, I was like, okay. They packed a lot into one little episode. Yeah. That was only what thirty-four minutes. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Yeah, Mando was fucking around. Mando. But Grogu that? is getting in his like little shit era. Yes, he Sounds is. Trouble. Yeah, he's starting to like, you know. That's Baby Yoda, Yoda right? Yep. Gro it's Grogu, bro. <laughs> what if he Grogu. turns to the dark side and they had to destroy him, and that's why you don't see him later? Would that be a fucked up story? Hey man, Bring it. it's fucked up. I think my my thing. I think that uh, Grogu's gonna become the Mandalorian. 
That's a mix of both. What? Yeah. What? Mando with <laughs> power. Where could that happen? With the force? I don't know. That's what I predict later. That's what I'm just saying. I'm just <sighs> sorry. Okay. Don't kill the messenger, man. Oh, I'm not the killing the messenger. Day. It's like an man. open timeline. I just don't know if I'm believing the messenger. <laughs> yeah, man. It's all right, man. A hundred years different. later. It's all love. I, I just saying, man. I'm saying. Did I hear what you said? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be years later, but yeah. yeah, not right now, but nah. Yeah, cause I mean, how, he hasn't shown up in anywhere else. No, man. I mean, so what? Do he, you know, like, did they hide him somewhere else? Is, did he get destroyed by a Sith or a Jedi? What happened? And George Lucas was really specific about his vagueness for what that character is in star wars so he purposely didn't gave no info as to far as what this is you know what you know where how, he comes from where he comes we from know with, his species yeah. but we don't know whose offspring this is yeah or just even what the name of the species is other than you know they just revealed that grogu you know is the name of the young one yeah a little baby yoda i heard that baby <laughs> all right and shout out to uh, dean jones from australia it's his birthday today Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Gene Jones. Happy birthday, D. Jones. A lot of Aussies today, man. Yeah, the Shout Aussies be yeah. Aussies. Aussies beyond us over there. It's, yeah, our, it's their morning show. You know? Respect. Yeah. They ready. <laughs> True that. So, Good morning, Australia. Morning, Australia. Yep, yeah, E-Zone's probably, uh, you know, in Japan, living living life <laughs> gloriously. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Um, wilding out, as they say. Awesome. Um, so it's morning for him. Or he's probably out and about in the street already. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, salute to all y'all watching. And we got Dean Jones right here with at, on the birthday edibles. Yeah, dude. Yeah, Dean Jones. Is this the before or after? Well, <laughs> after, it's for like sure. It's like the after, but if this is the before. Probably during. <laughs> or the during, yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Looks fun. Hey, the before and after shots are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are wild. Uh it's fucking wild, B. All right, next. And we got a Popo in the house up in here saying greetings all the way from Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, each man. What is it? Do it. Virginia, the VA. 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 I think they're legal out there. Yes, they are, sir. You are correct. <sighs> DMV. DMV. Yeah. They, got, they got a killer scene out there. Yes, they do. Right. And we got Stupid Almanac up in here warning uh, Twitch users that the Apple TV Twitch app is a piece of garbage, so switch to something else. Wait, what? Uh, what? Stupid Almanac is warning Twitch users saying saying the Apple TV Twitch app is garbage, so switch to something else. Oh, hmm. I see what you're Okay. I have not encountered have that, but okay. Yeah. Same. And we got Margarita up in here saying, homie court for Bolton for the internet being down. Oh, oh it's not his fault. <laughs> they think yeah. it's your fault, Cole. I mean, you know, we would normally like to blame him, but, you know, who can't? This, this is all AT and Boof. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we can blame Aton, though. Oh, we can this AT and Ton. Aton and Ton. Or Aton and T. <laughs> Oh my and T. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, Aton and Ton. That's a nope. <laughs> oh, man. Dom really liked that. <laughs> I know, we can tell. I heard it from out with yeah. no headphones just coming from the house. That's yeah. how loud it was. All right. And that seems to be it so far. All right. Uh, we want to remind you that we got a mix today. B underscore real TV is the place. I we got C minus Javi Lopez Psycho Less myself. Uh, we gonna pop it off for you. So uh, if you're on Twitch watching this, just stay locked in, and we are gonna snap in right away. Um, and we want to thank the ladies once again of Escape for coming through on their legendary 30th anniversary of the first album single, all that. And make sure you check out their show, um, SWV. And Escape, the Queens of R&B on Bravo Network, premieres Sunday, March 5th, 9.30 p.m. Six-part limited series. Wow. Know what I'm saying? Make sure you uh, support. And uh, we want to thank you once again for being down here with us and, uh, you know, having patience with us through uh, this week with all the drops that we had because we were on another network that was just, you know, boof. So... 
you know, we cut out here and there, but fortunately we found one that we can uh, use as backup till our regular network is up. But we thank you for your patience and love and kindness in all this. We send you positive energy. I C minus. Uh, thanks to everybody that uh, here at the table. B, Cali Blaze, Aton, Pedro. Shout out to the Trias crew, Dom, Ray, Colton. Um, to everyone that hangs with us here, chooses to be here with us in uh, Monday through Friday, and uh, every, joins me in the morning for my mixes. Really appreciate it. And uh, I want to say I love you, Mom. Uh, you're the best. And to my son, I love you. And, yeah, I'll see you guys sometime. I might do a mix this weekend. I don't know what. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, thank you very much. Dro. Uh, yeah, salute to everybody that's tuning in or here at the table and the Treehouse crew. Uh, we'll have the situation fixed by Monday as per AT&T. And, uh, yeah, just keep up with everything Green Thumb and uh, Insane. Boom. Treehouse. Shout to uh, Eric Bobo. Hope you're doing good, man. Shout to you. Shout to Ray Morning Shot Films. Shout to The Dominator. And don't forget about the Funky Drop. We got the Firefly happening in about 25 minutes. So get it at funkyfieldtips.com. And uh, Marbell's mother and I will be placing an order on Candy's bedroom. <laughs> yeah, wow. <baby>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. my God. Callie so, Blaze. All right, Tone. Uh, what up, everyone? Uh, shout out to everyone who's watching. Um, make sure you guys check out my Instagram, at Private Photo. Have a good weekend. Uh, big shout out to Escape. It was great having them here today. Uh, everybody at the table. Um, I know a lot of people always looking for our products in Central and NorCal, so uh, just want to let you know, thank you. Big shout out to Cookies. Uh, we're now in Cookies Hayward, Burner's Merced, uh, Cookies Modesto, Cookie Sanburn, and Lemonade in Antioch. So big shout out to Cookies family and uh, everybody else who supports the brand. Shout out to my boy Matt over at Cookies and uh, my girl, my family, and everybody else supports the show. Big shout out. See you all on Monday. Boom. Hey, look. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Let your guard down once in a while. Let someone in so that you can talk to them about the things that you're going through or things you want to do in life. Um, too many people shut themselves off from uh, other people, uh, from their own dreams and, and wants and desires and all that because they feel maybe they're not good enough for it they don't deserve it you deserve it but it ain't um coming to you automatically you're not entitled to it you have to work for it and we all know this anything you want in life you got to work for but you know first it's it's like allowing yourself to see your 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 abilities your inner abilities allowing that to happen and not holding yourself back with these hang-ups you know what i mean be vulnerable. It gives people insight into who you are and understanding of who you are. And maybe they can help you get to the whatever dream it is. Or maybe uh, you're going through, some, going through something emotionally. It might help you break through. You can have your guard up all the time, but um, you don't get real help that way. And you don't evolve and you grow this way. Bring it down once in a while. It ain't going to hurt you. All right? Um, with love, I say this, and by the grace of God, swallow that. Be real. TV.